Hello everyone, so we're going to do something a bit different for this week. We're going to do a week of using a Raspberry Pi 4 as a desktop OS replacement. Your desktop. <laughs> my desktop is a bit embarrassing. So um, at the moment my personal desktop computer is uh, Windows. Um, and not only is it Windows, it's actually Windows 8. <laughs> oh, that, that, that's just the worst thing about you, I'm afraid, dear. <laughs> <laughs> Well, it's not too bad if that's the worst thing. It's not too bad if that's the worst thing about me is that I have a Windows 8 true, desktop. True. It is. It is quite old. I've had it a few years. I don't even remember when I got it. Probably when the previous computer died because it was blue screening too much. Um, anyway, <laughs> um, I do use I do use Windows 10 for work. I have no choice in the matter for work, but I do have choice in the matter for what desktop I use for in my personal life. So that's hence this this little experiment. So I've managed to get a Raspberry Pi 4 8 gig. So this is kind of billed as a desktop replacement. So I'd say 8 gig is quite a sizable amount for memory. It's, that's half decent, really. Um, obviously, the price has gone up, though. <laughs> £74. In fact, we've bought, so we've got the Pi 4, we've got the official power supply. And we've also got a switch. So um, as with Pis generally, they don't have an on-off switch. So we've got this nice little, it's just a button. Uh, you press and it has an on off. Um, yeah. And the case as well, so they so the Pi 4 suffer with heat issues. So we've got a passive heat sink for a case. Oh, and this whole lot cost £100, and that excludes the um, micro SD cards here £100 from the Pi Hut. So, do you want to show the case? Yeah, so what we have is an um, aluminium armour heat sink case. Um, so basically, I, some of the choice I had in the matter was on what colour I wanted it to be. There is a wide range of colours on the website um, for this case. But I was kind of a bit more drawn towards, I suppose, the, the kind of girly colours. Um, even though I'm not much of a girly girl, I kind of like the looks of like, well, I like red anyway. I like red, the pink and, and purple. Um, but actually, Quids made a very valid point when I was thinking of what colour to choose in that, what colour are raspberries? Well. Um, it may, raspberries make you think kind of more the colours that I was tending towards anyway. So, so it's effectively this colour, this pink. So it's quite nice, nice and shiny. <laughs> yeah, so having that bolts across the pie and uh, sandwiches. The, I think that sandwiches the pie in the middle and that's the better heat dissipation. So we're going to try a couple of different operating systems, but what I found doing a bit of research is that since the Pi 4 is quite new, not many OSs are built for it yet. Fedora, for example, is not yet built for it. Um, Ubuntu 20.04 kind of is, but Ubuntu Mate, which would be the one I'd like to try, is not yet built. So yeah, we're going to start off with Noobs, and then we're going to go for Manjaro KDE. So these are the items unboxed. The Raspberry Pi 4 now has a big safety and user guide there into many different languages. Uh, well, I've got some uh, quick guide as well of what to not touch and what to not do with it. And the aluminium armour case has so we've got three thermal pads and two aluminium sides to the case, uh, the allen key and four screws. So if I reckon it is correct, the thermal pads go on like this. Oops. And it's that one down there, because what I didn't do was look up where the, what the uh, chips were before. So I've not really got an idea, but uh, that's how it's meant to go together. And this is the assembled case. So uh, it's a little bit tricky to get the thermal pads on. Yeah, just because the, uh, the size of them really very small and I've got fat fingers. I think Miss Quid should have done it really. But um, yeah, that's it and uh, we'll give it a go. So we've started off with um, Raspbian, which is the kind of default and recommended operating system to use with the Raspberry Pi. Um, so we actually used Noobs to install this. So Noobs turned out to be an OS installer rather than an OS itself. Unfortunately, it did take quite a long time to build Raspbian. Basically, we ended up going and having dinner and then coming back to find that it had finished installing yeah, so it did off. quite it did take quite a while so we installed the raspberry pi os raspbian and this came with the pixel desktop as you can see 
yeah, so everything is better suited for the older pies, as we can see with the memory usage. I know my favourite command, and don't accept this figure as being what the system would use. We've had quite a bit of messing around already, so I just wanted to demonstrate it's uh, like 300 meg used with the 8 gig of memory that we have on the system. So. We had a lot of problems getting the audio working properly on this, so we wanted to use the 3.5mm audio jack, because Miss Quids has some separate speakers like I do on my own computer, so I don't use the HDMI for the audio output. So I want to try and force the audio output to go down the AV jack. Now it seems quite simple how you should do this in the Pixel desktop, but on the back end it uses ALSA, and that just wasn't playing friendly. And what we needed was to use Pulse Audio, but the trouble is put Pulse Audio on and the audio output doesn't work again at all. It just got a right mess to sort out. So although we've got the audio output working, to do the recording of the video, we've had to use Pulse Audio. So we can't actually test to see what the output is until we remove Pulse Audio. I'm hoping this won't be such a problem in other desktops, but with the Pixel desktop, it's just been awful. So in order to work around this issue, we actually used Audacity in order to check that the audio had been captured in our test video. So whether there was an audio um, actually captured. So. Yeah, hopefully this recording will actually work. There's one other thing I normally like in the videos is show the webcam view, but uh, I don't know what it is with the performance of this. But it just could not cope with the webcam and recording. It literally flattened the CPU to the point it could barely even move the mouse. So I mean, we can see here we're actually doing the recording at the moment and CPU usage, so we're just over half on the four cores. So it, it's holding. Performance-wise, we found some of the applications are a bit slow to open, but once you've opened the application, it, it does work. It does seem to take a little bit longer to go to a website than you might expect, but and it's not overly bad, I don't think. No. Again, we're going to be a bit lagged here because we're doing the recording. But yes, there is still a bit of a delay even when you're not recording, so... Yeah. Okay, so we've got the videos now up and uh, able to select. So there's a wide range of different applications that come with Raspbian. So we have a lot of different programming related applications. So um, as, as we know, Raspberry Pi is often used for educational reasons. So as you can see, you have some kind of, kind of beginners um, or kids versions of different uh, programming languages. So you have Greenfoot, which is um, a bit more of a GUI kind of based um, IDE, um, along with Scratch, you know, another kind of beginner's language, uh, along with some others, including Mathematica and some others um, that I hadn't hadn't heard of, like Sonic Pi, for example. Um, so you have quite a mixture of different things. Yeah, they're quite some of them interesting options. BlueJay, I have heard of. I think that's a kind of more I want to say it's more of a kind of block based programming, so drag and drop kind of thing. Um, so yeah, quite quite a lot of options there. Um, education Smart Sim. Okay, that sounds interesting. We do have LibreOffice. We've seen internet already, but you know, LibreOffice is, as it works, okay, it's, this is the second time that we've opened it, tried to open it. That's a little bit faster than the first time. So, but as soon as it's open, you know, uh, it works like normal, so that's cool. That means that it does have the ability to cache the applications that you've opened, that's why it's a little bit quicker. Mm. It's a little feature from Ubuntu and Debian, plus we have other Linux distributions as well. Uh, so as you can see, we've, uh, we had VLC to begin with, but we've installed a couple more in the process of recording and things. Uh, we have the image viewer, have a few games which I spent a few minutes kind of having a play around with. Uh, so we've got essentially Pong, Frogger, Frogger yeah. yeah, so it's Bunner, uh, <laughs> um, and some other things, Minecraft Pi. Yeah, so we have some games as well, so that's quite fun. And the accessories, so pretty straightforward there. Um, so yeah, that's a kind of overview of the applications that are offered. And there is an application installer. Yes, there is an application installer, so uh, you have to go to Preferences and Remove Software, so perhaps not the first place um, I'd think to look to, to look for an installer, but it is here. 
and we have used it to install obviously the applications that didn't come pre-installed and that works quite nicely. Mm. So I suppose we could just do this. It takes a little while to query but yes so as you can see you just tick what you want and apply so fairly straightforward system. So I think it's been an interesting use so far and I have to say it's quiet compared to your other computer. <laughs> yeah. it's, it's silent. <laughs> Yeah, normally my desktop has this kind of quiet rumbling noise, whereas this, um, you kind of almost forget it's there because it's literally making no noise at all. Yeah, and temperature-wise, well, you've just touched the case and it's you didn't burn It's warm, but not yourself. hot, no. Mm. So that was day one. Thanks for watching. And we'll see you all later. Bye.